sorry for the absence about the videos, but we are back. Um, I managed to move house, which is good. Internet is questionable, but I decided that we're going to make a video about the women's Jiro because I've been lazy and haven't done any content on it. Um, we might have some more content because I think it's on Rise, so I can use all that. But anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the numbers required to basically win the uh, Giro Rosa. So in the Giro Rosa stage four, it's been pretty hilly already, but this was a TT stage, which is pretty much a mountain top finish, um, mountain TT. Um, but we're going to get into the exact details and maybe what bikes they should or should not have used. Uh, Anna van der Breggen won the TT, surprise, surprise, uh, by about a minute on Demi Bollering, who had the power data. We also have power data from Juliette Lebus as well. Um, so we can go compare them all and see what the deal is and how good you actually have to be. Uh, to get uh, to win a stage in the Giro Rosa. So first of all, we'll go on Juliette Labusis. Now she, uh, they weigh slightly different weight. She has 55 kilos in um, for the weight, 270 normalized for about 27 minutes. Now here, the average speed is 24 kilometers an hour. Um, so I think the equipment choice is here. Um, and if we can look here, and for Van der Breggen, personally, I think they should be quite different. Um, the speeds always seem higher on here because I think the, often the Italians don't know how to measure distances very well, so they're often a bit different to reality. But, and also I guess Strava maybe always takes off a little bit. But if we go here, so she averaged 24 kilometers an hour. Now, um, for 270 watts, so 4.9 watts per kilo for 27 minutes, which is sort of what you expect. Like, um, if you get the Andrew Coggan chart up, um, then, you know, it's like, it's not as high as I've ever seen. Um, if we get the white and gray one up, because that generally is a bit more accurate. Um, but yeah, so basically 4.9 watts per kilo. So on the flat, it's pretty quick. So this is why a lot of them use, use TT bikes. 37k an hour on a 2% gradient. TT bike is obviously quicker there. However, I think for a lot of them, it doesn't make sense to have a TT bike on this. 19k an hour for 7% was obviously pretty quick. Like, no, no doubt about that. And there are some high speed sections here, like 36k an hour. But I still don't think a TT bike is, is the one because um, their TT bikes are not going to be, they're going to be like 7.5 to 8 kilos maybe. And so you think like that is an extra kilo that you're going to have. Is it going to be worth it? So women's, they say their threshold biggest is like 5.5. So I think Van Vluten might be stronger than this. But 5.5 watts per kilo threshold. Oh no, sorry, 5.7 is actually what it is. So that's why I think maybe the level on the Jira has been quite a hard race is not as high as it has been, because when I did Van Bluten's power data like a couple years ago, I think she was doing a lot more. But yeah, here, so I think, I don't think it makes sense to have a TT bike if you've got such a long climb. Like, a kilo, kilo and a half is not going to add up. And like, I think Van der Breggen, she rode a TT bike, but with not a disc wheel, just like deep wheels. Um, But that's still going to be weighing like probably seven and a half to eight kilos. So you can get it down to 6.8. I think it could be quicker, but maybe not for Van der Breggen because she was going pretty quick. Anyway, I'm going to go over to Demi Bollering's power data because it's a bit more interesting and a bit more relevant because Juliet Boost finished two minutes 14 down. So you'd guess that Van der Breggen would be doing like five and a half or so. Um, but if we look at Demi Bollering, I put her weight in as 58 kilos. That seems to be what people think it is. Could be less um, because the watts per kilo don't seem enough. But we'll have a look, quick look at her setup. So she had the same setup as Van der Breggen, TT bike, but not deep section wheels. Um, and obviously, skin suit, aero, uh, looks like a standard aero um, road helmet. I don't think that's a TT helmet. Obviously, overshoes, um, because why not? However, um, yeah, so she did 295 normalized at 58 kilos, which is a, a way more impressive, or a lot more watts um, per kilo than old Juliette Labousse. 25 and a half kilometers an hour. So this is where maybe a TT bike is going to make a difference, especially on the first part. And I guess it also depends how comfortable you are in the TT position. Like I know often on the men's side, De Moulin really likes riding a TT bike. He rode it up, plunged to Belfi, but that's probably because he's so comfortable on it. It's not an issue. But other people, maybe you don't like the TT bike. It doesn't make as much sense. So we'll go through her power file as well. So it says 5.1 watts per kilo here, um, but I think probably wrong. I think maybe Juliette Labousse might be a bit heavier or the power meters don't read exactly perfect, which is probably more, more the answer than the weight issue, um, but it could be that. But here you can see, uh, 290 normalized um, for six minutes, so 282 watts. So, you know, obviously not going too hard at the beginning part. And then up, up this is the main climb here. So like basically a 20 minute ish effort on the actual climb, uh, brings it up to 300 and it has altitude as well. Um, Strava source, which it says is another 6% or so. I disagree. I think altitude doesn't really pay too much attention, maybe over 1500 meters, but I think like 1200 to 1500 meters, I don't think there's much altitude 
in play, um, especially for these lot, they will train at altitude, so they'll be relatively decent at it. Like maybe if you're straight from sea level, never done altitude, maybe it will be a bit more of an issue. Um, but yeah, again here, 20k an hour, like that's okay. There's really fast sections, but again, I don't know how useful it is um, to have the whole TT. But I guess here though, like on this flat part, it will be pretty useful because she's backed off the power a lot, 265 watts, but can just get idle and then it's pretty rapid. And then the final part to the line, again, is like she did a minute and a half at 324. So pretty decent, I guess, you, you get a bit of recovery time before you whack it to the line. Um, so maybe she could have, maybe she had a bit more in the tank, because you see here, she got to like 600 watts in the final. So maybe she could have gone it a little bit harder, maybe earlier. But anyway, nobody knows. Um, but yeah, so the level here is probably like 5.2, 5.3 will be my prediction. And then Van der Breggen's doing probably 5.5 for 25 minutes, which is, is very, very solid for women's racing. I'm not going to lie um like obviously it's mid stage as well i uh, sorry mid um not mid stage it's a tt uh it's mid stage race though um so obviously that makes it a little bit more impressive than if it was just on her own um they obviously have pretty good recovery it is that is you know, a full time job so you would expect big hours um and there's races to be about too long either um but anyway that seems to be the deal with the women's power data so basically if you want to win the giro rosa you probably have to be doing like 5. Point six five point seven fresh for twenty minutes would be my prediction. Maybe a little bit more, maybe five point eight. Um which is obviously a pretty high standard. Not many blokes can do that. I have done it, but you know, that's irrelevant. Um but anyway, um so yeah, pretty high level these days actually. Um I think the the worst thing with women's racing is that not many people are at a similar level. And I having said that, the men's racing Tour de France is also boring because Pikachu is a billion times better. But generally I think when women's racing gets the point, which it will do when more and more people can whack out 5.6, 5.7 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, then I think we'll get to a point where it will be a lot more interesting. Um, and also Van der Breggen's retiring, so that'll be pretty good. Because, like, you know, if Demi Vollering was the strongest, then it's only, like, 10 seconds in between each other. Um, and maybe if SD works, you know, was getting many good riders because they've got three in the top um, top four. And the other interesting thing is how many people she DQ'd. Like, look at this. Over the limit, all of these people. Like, 10 minutes back, like, they're probably only doing, like, four per kilo. So, to be fair, like, probably should get dq But, anyway, uh, well, over the limited, I mean, I, I, I don't really understand how you're losing that much time um, to Van der Breggen on a, on a 20. I mean, it was a pretty impressive effort, but I wouldn't say it was, like, absolutely thermonuclear. Like, yeah, she whacked out 5.7 was per kilo for 25. I would be like, fair enough, you are going to get over the limited. But I think it seems a bit odd. But maybe, you know, Kiara, Kiara Consani, for example, is a sprinter, so I guess... I guess just a bit tired four days in or whatever. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And I will see you in the next one.